Linux Mint, Ubuntu, or Zorin OS are among the best options for Linux beginners. If you're new to Linux and thinking about trying it for the first time, maybe you've just downloaded your very first ISO and are ready to install, it's important to choose a beginner-friendly distro. Picking the right one can make a difference between a smooth, exciting first experience and hours of frustration trying to get the basic things to work. When you first dip your toes into the Linux world, it can feel a bit overwhelming. There are hundreds of distros out there, each claiming to be the best. But the truth is, they all have different purposes and target audiences. Some are designed for power users who love customizing every tiny detail, while others focus on giving you a smooth, no-hassle experience right from the start. Some Linux distros are very beginner-friendly, while others are more suited for advanced users who like to tinker. And when I say tinker, I mean spending hours learning command line tricks, configuring your desktop environment manually, and compiling software from source code. That might sound fun for some people, and it can be incredibly rewarding. But if you're just starting out, it can also be frustrating and make you want to run back to Windows or Mac OS. If you're just starting out, you want something that works out of the box. You don't want to spend hours figuring out how to connect to Wi-Fi or install your favorite apps. This is especially important if you're switching to Linux for productivity. You probably just want to open your laptop, connect to the internet and start working without having to learn 5 different commands to get your sound card working. That's where distros like Linux Mint, Ubuntu or Zorin OS come in handy. These are often called getaway distros because they make the transition from Windows or Mac OS super smooth. Think of them as the training wheels of the Linux world. And that's not a bad thing. Training wheels are there to help you learn without falling over. And once you're confident, you can always explore more advanced options later. Let's start with the Linux Mint. Linux Mint, for example, has a very familiar interface, kind of like Windows 7 or 10. That means your taskbar, start menu and system tray will all be there where you expect them to be. The learning curve is minimal because most of the interactions feel instantly recognizable. It comes with everything you need. Office apps, media players, system tools, ready to go. This means that right after installation you can browse the web, play videos, listen to music and edit documents without having to download or configure anything extra. It even comes with the handy utilities like a software updater and driver manager to keep your system secure and stable. It's stable, polished and has a huge community behind it. The community is one of the biggest advantages because if you ever run into a problem, there's probably already a forum post, a YouTube tutorial or a wiki article explaining exactly how to fix it. And if you can find the answer, you can simply ask. Linux Mint's community is known for being especially friendly to beginners. Now let's talk about Zorin OS. Zorin OS is another great option, especially if you're coming from Mac OS or want a slick, modern look. Its design is clean and minimal, with smooth animations and a professional feel. Even little details like the icon set and default font make it feel a premium operating system. You can even switch layouts to mimic Windows or Mac OS right out of the box. This is perfect if you want that familiar home base while still exploring Linux. And the Zorin Appearance app lets you tweak your desktop in just a few clicks. No technical knowledge required. Zorin OS has a strong focus on performance, it runs well on older hardware, and if you got a laptop from 2012 collecting dust in a drawer, Zorin OS could give it a second life. And finally, let's talk about Ubuntu. We can't talk about beginner-friendly distros without mentioning Ubuntu. Ubuntu has been the face of Linux for new users for over a decade. It's backed by Canonical, a company that provides long-term support and regular updates, so you know it's not going to disappear overnight. Ubuntu Software Center is one of the easiest ways to install applications. You just search for what you want, click install and you're done. It also has excellent hardware compatibility, meaning your Wi-Fi, sound card and graphics usually work right after installation. One of the strengths of Ubuntu is its vast documentation. If you search how to do something in Ubuntu, you'll almost always find a detailed step-by-step -step guide, sometimes straight from Ubuntu's own official help pages. Why start simple? 
you might be wondering why not just start with Arch Linux or Gen2 and learn everything from scratch. Well, you could, but for most beginners, starting with something simple helps build your confidence. It lets you learn the basics of Linux, like the file system structure, package management, and basic terminal commands, without the frustration of trying to assemble an entire operating system by hand. Once you've got your footing, you can absolutely move on to more advanced distros. Many users start with Mint, Ubuntu or Zorin, then transfer to something like Fedora, OpenSUSE or even Arch once they're ready for a deeper dive. Of course, Mint, Ubuntu and Zorin aren't the only great starting points. There are a few other beginner-friendly options worth mentioning, each with its own unique strength. Pop OS Developed by System76, Pop OS is based on Ubuntu but designed with a focus on productivity and performance. It's especially popular with gamers and creators because it comes with excellent driver support for Nvidia and AMD graphic cards right out of the box. It also has a built-in tiling window manager that makes multitasking a breeze. A Max Linux this one is a lightweight, fast and perfect for older hardware, but it looks clean and modern. MX Linux is known for being extremely stable and having a set of helpful tools for managing your system without needing the terminal. Fedora Workstation While Fedora is often seen as a distro for developers, the Workstation Edition is surprisingly beginner-friendly. It ships with the latest software, has strong security features, and gives you a taste of cutting-edge Linux while still being stable enough for daily use. The point is, there is no shortage of beginner-friendly distro to choose from. Whether you want something sleek and modern, something that works on old hardware, or something geared towards gaming and creative work, there is a Linux distro out there that fits your needs. At the end of the day, the best distro for you is the one that fits your needs right now. If you value stability, ease of use, and minimal setup, Stick with beginner-friendly distros. If you're curious and love to experiment, you can always try something more advanced later. That's the beauty of Linux. You're free to choose, change and customize however you want. So if you're brand new to Linux, remember, start with a distro that works out of the box, learn the basics and enjoy the freedom that comes with it. By the way, I already have quite a few tutorials on my channel that explain how to install Linux Mint, Zorin OS, Ubuntu on your computer and also some more advanced Linux distros, so make sure to check them out if you need help installing your next Linux distro on the computer. The guides are very detailed and tailored for beginners, so everything should be easy and simple. Anyway, this is it for today. I hope this video was helpful to you. Let me know in the comment section below which Linux distro do you think of trying first, Linux Mint, Ubuntu or Zorin OS, or maybe some other distro. That will be interesting to know. And if you find this video helpful, please support with your like, I appreciate it very much. And if it's your first time to the channel, take a second to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. This will help me a lot to grow my channel and bring you more helpful, interesting videos. And if you like what I'm doing and would like to support my channel, you can always use super thanks or simply buy me a coffee. I'm gonna put the link in the description. But this is it for today. I hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.